Welcome to the History Fix. What I'm going to talk about today is human evolution. And I've got a sort of question, which is really the question, who are we exactly as a species? And I think we can answer that question, get some definition on what kind of species we are if we look at our biological evolution. What I don't want to do is to get bogged down in a lot of uh, discussion about the detail of um, which fossil was uh, descended from which other fossil, because actually as the evidence increases, the specialists, the experts are constantly changing their minds about exactly what the sequence is. So we're not going to worry too much about the detail of the hominin evolutionary tree. We're going to focus on some key things about how that evolution happens in general, so as to give rise to our species today. The very first thing I want to focus on is upright walking, because the real distinction between the apes and ourselves, or our family of species, if you like, the hominins, is that we are defined by upright walking. And that upright walking means that what had previously been two front legs become two arms. And that shift to having our arms, and most importantly, our hands, which stop being feet and become hands, free to do other things, is hugely significant for hominin evolution. It means that it becomes possible for us to begin to fashion tools in order to engage with the world, in order to be more productive, really, in the way in which we seek resources, above all, seek food supplies um, from the natural world. So the upright walking hominins become also the tool-making hominins. And as soon as people start making tools, they're beginning to think more. Um, and as they think more, they're also beginning to develop more sophisticated ways of cooperating with each other to become more effective at gathering the resources they need from nature and hunting the animals that they need um, in nature. So you've got um, a development of cooperation, you've got a development of tool making uh, technology, you've got a development of increasingly clever ways of exploiting uh, the environment, and that means growing brain power in evolutionary terms. You need bigger brains if you're going to become better at making tools, if you're going to become more effective in building cooperation with others, building wider social uh, groups. So the brain power of hominins over time steadily increases. And this is one of the most important things, of course, about our character as a species. Interestingly, there's a kind of contradiction, a sort of tension, really, between growing brain power, which is so important, and upright walking. Um, upright walking means a relatively narrow pelvis, whereas a lot of brain power means a large head. And that's the reason why human labor is one of the most difficult kinds of labor in the animal kingdom, because our heads are so big, women experience a lot of pain. Human women give it a lot of pain when they're, when they're giving birth. Growing brain power linked with growing uh, tool making uh, capacity and cooperation, all based upon the fact that we are upright walking, gives rise to a species which is based fundamentally, if we define exactly what we are, uh, based fundamentally on the fact that we live in social groups, we're organized in social groups, we are a social animal, and we're a social animal because we engage in collective, planned, collective, intelligent, collective labor as a way of obtaining the resources that we need. Now that's a defining characteristic of the species which reaches its fully developed 
form, we reach our fully developed form as a species, probably round about 120,000 years ago. The species Homo sapiens is created in Africa, and some of our species leaves Africa and begins to colonize other parts of the world round about 80,000 years ago. And I think it's true to say that by about 15,000 years ago, pretty well the whole of the planet has been colonized by Homo sapiens. And that means adaptation to a wide range of different uh, environments. And the critical thing now is that up until this point, changes in the species have been essentially biological. We've been thinking today about a process of biological evolution going on over time. But we now have a species which is so intelligent, which is so good at coming up with different ways of making tools, different ways of developing strategies for obtaining food, different ways of organizing socially, based, of course, on language, which is absolutely central to thinking and also to cooperation in groups. We've now got a species that doesn't need to continue to evolve biologically, physically, in order to take advantage of different environments. It's now a species that can do that culturally, through cultural evolution, cultural adaptation, coming up with new ways of exploiting the environment, of living within the environment, in order to provide the things that we need. So we're going to start talking next time about this process of cultural change, which really takes off with the colonization of the world by our species, Homo sapiens, a species defined by the fact that we live in social groups, we make tools, and we engage in planned collective labor. We are facing the greatest crisis in the history of humanity. Capitalism is driving us towards climate catastrophe. To understand how we got here and how we get out of it, we really need to understand human history. What we're trying to do here at The History Fix is to give us the understanding of the past that we need to equip us to fight for a better future. If you like what we're doing, please share and subscribe and also contribute to our Patreon page. Thanks very much.